Summit Cambrian Knocker. Made in the USA, USA Seal, super awesome. Aww. Solid. Yep, rock and roll. We have to scrape the decks. So the next big step in our LS build was getting our cylinder heads. And you know, it was a set of Junkyard 799s, but I wanted to clean them up a little bit to make sure they were gonna seal well and work even better. So I brought them down here to TrickFlow Specialties to the custom porting shop, Total Engine Airflow. And the guys gave me a nice beauty cut on them. And they also went ahead and installed my valve springs and got all the valve stuff figured out. So I just picked up the heads. They're nice, clean, and brand new looking so we can get them thrown on top of our new LS. So we're getting back into putting this thing together. Me and Brian left off by cleaning this thing up and getting it ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish thing, putting this thing together. It uh, should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be throwing some lifters in it, head gaskets, and we're gonna throw the heads on, get the head bolts in, torqued. So an LS is a little bit different than your conventional small block Chevy. The lifters are actually underneath the heads. So versus like in a small block where your lifters are up in the oil galley and you don't have to pull the heads off to get them. In this, you do have to pull the heads off to take the lifters out. So it makes a cam change a little bit harder, but with something like this, you know, we've put a bunch of new gaskets in this thing. A set of new head gaskets is probably a good idea. So I have some of our Summit drop-in Morel lifters, which are a really good high quality LS lifter. I'm uh, super excited about those. So yeah, let's get to it and get these things installed. So I got our lifters all lubed up, got them installed in the lifter trays, and I'm gonna be putting them in. So this is our Summit lifter tray and Morel lifter combo. Same deal with before, two down, two more to go guys. We have all four of our lifter trays and all our lifters installed and now it's time to throw the lifter tray retaining bolts in and get those torqued down. So I went ahead, cleaned them off, threw a little bit of blue Loctite on them and um, I'm gonna get these started and then we're gonna torque these to 125 inch pounds. So they're just little baby fasteners so they don't need to be too terribly tight. We get all four started then I'm gonna come back to this side and torque them. I got my AC Delco torque wrench set to 125 inch pounds. So the next step here before I go ahead and put the head gasket on and get some heads on this thing I'm gonna grab one of my factory push rods and I'm actually gonna seat all the lifters to the cam. So just kind of push them down. We're just making sure, you know, as you know, this is a factory roller motor. So you need, it's not like usually when you have aftermarket lifters that, that are roller, you have like a tie bar kind of setup to hold them together. So instead that has, this has lifter trays and these lifter trays, um, the lifters, has two notches on each side and then the lifter tray holds the lifter from rotating. So, you know, it's, um, this isn't the old style flat tap it cams of the past. This thing has some good high performance parts built into it right from the factory. So the lifter tray, you know, when they're new, I actually hold the lifter and you saw I slipped them all in at once. And I'm just looking down. Obviously I can't see these middle ones through the galley, but I'm just looking down to make sure None of the lifters are sideways. So with all our lifter trays installed, torque, our lifter seated to the cam, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the deck on this thing one more time with you know a rag and some brake clean. So we want a nice clean ceiling surface. Now I'm gonna grab some head gaskets. With that done, we can go ahead and grab some cylinder heads and start throwing some heads on this thing. So we got our set of minty fresh reconditioned 799s here. It's gonna add a lot of ump to our six liter. I'm super excited about it. Go ahead, drop a head on this thing, and uh, I'm gonna throw the other one on as well, and we can start putting head bolts in it. We're gonna be putting stock head bolts back in this motor, brand new minty fresh ones. You know, I'm not getting all dangerous and reusing stock head bolts. But uh, the big reason why I'm not putting studs in this thing is because it's a, uh, this is just a not that hot of a naturally aspirated application. So I'm not boosting it, I'm not doing anything crazy. And uh, this motor, the full plan is it is always gonna be naturally aspirated. So, you know, the, this was kind of done with a budget in mind, is kind of, you know, why I've been building this. And um, so factory head bolts 
on a just a hopped up compression motor will be perfectly fine. Went ahead and got all our big head bolts in and seated. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in and seat them and then we're gonna go through the LS head torquing. So now it's time to start our torquing procedure and the first pass is gonna be, these are torque to yield bolts. So there's kind of three steps to torquing these. We're gonna take them all to 22 foot pounds and then 90 degrees and then 70 degrees after that. And that'll give us the final clamping number that we want. And so the way we're gonna start, we're gonna go one, two, and then it's three, four. It's basically a big spiral on the way out is the best way to explain it. And contrary to popular belief, an extension does not throw off the torque number. That's the first pass on this side. And then we wait to torque these um, eight millimeter bolts in the top of the head. There's five on each side to our last pass. And we're gonna take those to 22 foot pounds as well. So that's our second torquing pass on this head. We're gonna go ahead, put our second pass on the other head. Then it'll be our third pass and um, this thing will be done and we can start hanging some more parts on it like a, a valley cover, the intake, front cover. So we're just starting on our second pass on the passenger side and again, 90 degrees. So 90 degrees on these after initially torquing them to 22 foot pounds ends up somewhere around 70. So um, just for kind of a number reference. Then I'd kind of mentioned before the five upper bolts on the top of the head, we're gonna wait till our final pass and torque those to 22 foot pounds. With our second pass done on the heads complete, these things are at 90 degrees, roughly 70 foot pounds. We're actually gonna take them to 70 more degrees and that'll be our final torque. So I'm gonna take my torque wrench, I'm gonna dial her down to 70. So we've made our way almost all the way through the torquing sequence. We just have nine and 10 left, and then we're gonna hit the bolts across the top. The way the sequence goes is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then on the final pass, you torque the top five, and those just go to 22 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to the other side, run through the torque sequence one more time, get those torqued and then our top five and um, we can start moving along with some more parts. This thing's going together really fast and uh, I'm super excited. So our heads are all torqued and um, ready to go. Now we can start throwing some other parts on this motor um, like our valley cover, all our valve train components, front cover, intake, balancer, manifold, um, manifolds actually, and really getting this thing dressed up and ready to go. I am, uh, I'm super excited. So the next step we're gonna move on to is installing our valve train components. So I'm gonna grab our push rods, we're gonna drop those in first, and then we'll put our rockers on. So we're gonna be dropping our push rods in, and I'm using a set of TrickFlow 7.4 inch push rods. They're kind of a, you know, this is a 600, 600-ish lift cam with a, our Morel rock or lifters. And then um, I'm also putting a set of Trunnion upgraded rockers. Now, when we get to the rocker portion, and I'm just dropping the push rods in, like nothing too crazy with this. Um, obviously that one's up right now. So come over to this side, same basis, just dropping the push rods in. And this is, uh, these push rods will work with a lot of around 600 lift cam selection. But if you're curious of what push rod you need and you're not exactly sure, you can grab a measuring tool, go ahead and measure, figure it out, and get exactly what push rod will work for you. Now it's time to start installing our rockers and the rockers I chose are the Summit brand. These are the needle bearing Trunnion upgraded rockers. I could have went ahead, took the stock rockers, took them apart, upgraded them to Trunnion bearings or bushings, but to save myself a little time and uh, you know, the cost isn't that much greater than just buying the Trunnion kit, I went ahead and got all new rockers. So it still uses your stock style pedestal, which I've wiped off and installed. I have it sitting here. And then we're gonna start putting rockers on. So it comes with the bolts, everything you need provided. Yeah, these are really fantastic. I'm gonna be using some thread locker on all these. So, and I'm gonna be bouncing around installing these because, so like when putting these together, you have some push rods that are higher than others. So I'm gonna grab one of these, 
rotate the churning around. So the flat side goes towards the bottom of the bolt and the round side sits on the pedestal. Then I'm gonna grab some Loctite. I've gone ahead and put a little bit of assembly lube on all the rocker tips, but when it comes to assembly lube, you can never have enough. Make sure that thing is nice and centered on there. So we're just gonna keep rolling right along. I went ahead and torqued these two rockers to 25 foot pounds before the Loctite dried. So I'm just gonna keep repeating the step going down the row, you know, getting these things, throwing a little bit of pre-lube on them, uh, Loctite and torquing them. So, you know, we have 16 to do. It's gonna take a little bit. So we're just gonna run right through it. So Brian's back to help us finish this thing up. As you guys saw earlier, I got the heads and all the valve train components installed. And one of the things I did with this thing is put a set of 799s on it. Now the six liter comes with 317s factory. Pretty common. So do you want to explain why we're making a cylinder, a stock for stock cylinder head swap? Sure, okay, so one of the nice things about a 317 head is if you're boosting it, it's nice because it's nice boost friendly compression ratio. But if you want to make some big power with it, compression is key. Anytime you can put a 65 cc chamber on something instead of 70, it's going to bump compression up about a half a point. Still pump gas friendly, although not 87 friendly, but 91 friendly. And that extra little bit of compression is torque from idle all the way through redline. It's free power. So often we'll mill the heads even on top of that to knock them from 65 to 60. We didn't do that. We just kind of cleaned them up this time around but it's gonna be making a lot more uh, torque across the range now. Yeah, and this is something, you know, that's the key is, so these like 799s or sort of 243s, which mm -hmm. ideally are the same exact casting, just different casting numbers. Um, these are a, a cheap, easy way to bolt on horsepower to your LS, you know? So putting them on top of a six liter, like Brian kind of touched, it's gonna make a little more compression, more torque, and this is gonna be a really healthy, naturally aspirated build with this, you know, this has a Summit Big Torquinator in it. It's, yeah. This thing's gonna be a ripper and I'm so, pumped. So it, it's kind of funny, we're taking this engine that was kind of pedestrian, but in a lot of ways, we're building it up like you would of a Trailblazer SS LS2 engine. That had, you know, very similar to the heads we're using right now. That thing had 10.9 to one compression from the factory. We're putting a Torquinator cam in it on top of that. So imagine all the power of a, t a cammed up TBSS in this Ford. So yeah, let's get a front cover and a fancy, you know, we have a fancy balancer to put on this thing. And um, yeah, it's uh, this is when all the cool trick parts still start going on. The so um, stuff. so I'm just gonna be reinstalling our sensor here. I cleaned it all up, um, threw a little bit of oil on the O-ring there. And now I'm just reinserting it. And that just has one little baby bolt that holds it on. The spirit of this build is cheap, affordable junkyard parts. Yeah. And so, you know, that's where our cylinder heads came from. I am going to be bolting some crust. I did paint, you know, I don't have it here, but I did paint the, the accessory bracket is painted. It's, you know, it, it's gonna be, it's um, painted flat black Fancy. to match uh, some other stuff. Right. But we are gonna be shoving a crusty water pump on this thing that works perfectly fine and does not leak. Um, maybe at a later date, it'll get replaced. Uh, You're all about the horsepower, though. Yeah, it's, this is all in the pursuit of horsepower. Like, right. um, things don't have to look good to go fast. So I went ahead and threw a little silicone on each side. I have our Felpro timing cover gasket, which I'm a big, all gaskets are good, but I like Felpros a little better. And they're blue. And they're blue. We all like right. blue stuff. We like blue. Kind of one of the things that I like to do is I'll take, get a couple like at least one bolt started on one side because these gaskets do have a little spring to them. In their step? In their step, yes. They like to skip. Okay, those are good and snug. On the pursuit of horsepower, are we putting nice new shiny parts on this thing? So that's kind of where I would like it. And then we're gonna be using our damper installer. So the nice thing about this tool is, is it's not working the threads in the crank as you're putting tons of foot pounds on it. It's just, you know, it's got a nice surface area there. So it's just really doing a nice job of, you know, drawing it down on the damper itself. I think that dampener is installed. Solid. So Solid. look how much easier than that is than blasting it on with a rubber mallet. Like it's almost like we knew what we were doing. 
yeah, I highly recommend anybody that's pulling balancers off LSs all the time. Get the tool. Yeah, invest in the tool. It, there will be a question of like, well, does that really go all the way up to the front cover? And the answer is no. There's actually a little bit of a space in there before it hits uh, the back of this other side of the pulley. We'll zoom in on it for you. But when you put it together, that is seated. Don't worry about a thing. And now we're gonna put some torquage on it. So I noticed that you bucked up for the uh, ARP damper bolt. Yes, so my theory behind that was in the event the ba balance server has to come back off, I can reuse this. The factory crank bolt is TTY, so it's one and done. So, and this thing is very, very affordable in the grand scheme of how big it is. It really is. It's like, you know, you see an ARP bolt this size and you're like, oh, it's gonna cost 40 bucks. And it's like, no, that's actually a really awesome deal for it. And like he said, you can use it across multiple belts for the rest of your life. Because it's LS, it's Chevy, it just works like that. Gonna lube up the bolt here. So we're gonna torque it to 235 foot pounds. So I got the thing locked out. And that is done. So that's torqued. Now it's time to get some valve covers, water pump, and the intake on this thing. And I also have a set of manifolds to put on it. So uh, let's get it dressed up. Valve covers installed. I've gone ahead and thrown new gaskets in these. Go ahead, do the same thing on this side. So with those installed, I can go ahead and throw the water pump on it. Now I'm gonna be installing my Junkyard Fresh water pump as well. You know, crusty but trusty here. Now I know a lot of you guys are probably asking me the question, yelling at the screen, why I've put so many cool parts on this thing and I'm putting an old crusty water pump on it is because this water pump worked well on the other engine, it did not leak and in the F100, the motor sits far back enough where this is the easy part to change. So I'm gonna use this water pump until it starts leaking and then I will buy a brand new one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and torque the water pump bolts just to 22 foot pounds. So now it's time for our biggest piece of eye candy, the thing that's gonna tie this thing all together and that's our Holly High Rise Manifold. And I've gone ahead and thrown a Sniper EFI throttle body on the thing. So this is gonna be controlled by a Terminator X Max system because it is gonna be bolted to a 4L80. So, um, you know, as I've said before, we're swapping this into a 78 F100. So the truck's got a sweet set of turbine wheels that have been uh, powder coated, a sweet prismatic powders color. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's absolutely gorgeous. But for the Holly High Rise, I need to go ahead and throw in these studs for the mounting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and thread all these in. Now this thing is absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, it is color matched to the wheels on the truck. So, and before you guys are wondering, I've gone ahead and pre-installed all the gaskets. I put a little glue on them. With our crown jewel on top, this thing is complete for the most part. Now, I have a couple other odds and ends to hit, like hanging the rest of the accessory drive, manifolds, injectors, just some general stuff, steam ports, but I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. You know, this combination here with the six liter with a big torquinator cam should make about 400 horsepower, and it's gonna make this F100 a ball to drive. And we went in ahead and addressed some key parts like, you know, the rockers, a good oil pump, a good timing set that's really gonna make this thing live a long, healthy life. Now, as always, make sure to like and subscribe to the Summit Racing YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any content. And punch that notification bell as well so you're the first to know. But I'm gonna get the rest of this thing buttoned out so I can get it in the truck. So until next time, I'm Justin with Summit Racing and thanks for watching.